This is a scenario report of the little round top scenario from GMT Games' The Three Days of Gettysburg, the third edition. So this scenario focuses on the Confederate attempt to roll up the Union left or southern flank on the 2nd of July 1863, on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. Now looking over the field, the CSI, CSA begins strong, uh, but they have no reinforcements. They really need to push hard and capture two hexes of the little round top to win the scenario. Now at the start, Union defences are stretched thin, but they have a strong reinforcement schedule ahead. They'll need to hold, delay, and keep their forces intact to allow time for those reinforcements to come up and hold the line. Now a lot's happened uh, already uh, in this scenario. Uh, the CSA on the left begin with the initiative. They have the option of leading with Hood, the yellow and tan colours, or McClaw, the green and tan colours at the top. Now I realise that Hood will have one more activation than McClaw because Hood is on map, so Longstreet can uh, give his core efficiency bonus to Hood, but not McClaw who is currently off map. Now Hood also has more brigades under his command, so in theory he can do more damage per activation marker compared to McClaw's brigades, who are uh, effectively under the command of Longstreet for the purposes of this scenario. Now, the remaining activation markers are placed in the draw. Now Hood's men are stretched out over about a 1,250-yard frontage. Their objective, the little round top, lies just off to the right of this this image below, roughly uh, 2,000 yards directly in front or east of them, and it is at present completely undefended. However, to get there, they'll need to cross some of the most difficult terrain in this area, woods, uh, rocky areas, and, and rough rocky woodlands, which will slow down and disorder Hood's brigades as they try to advance. And those uh, scattered Union defenders positioned on Hewick's Ridge will make things even more difficult. Now Hood wants his brigade commanders to minimise those difficulties. He wants to ensure that they uh, maintain good order and organisation for as long as possible. Thus, Robertson, uh, Law, Benning and Anderson uh, begin to funnel their men through the small gap between Hook's Ridge and Big Round Top. This is both, the, the idea here is that they, they both avoid the worst of the terrain and they concentrate force against Ward's Union defenders on that ridge there. Uh, who will be forced to react to the situation. And this initial advance can be seen in, in this image as they move forward. Now Hood receives the next activation, so he continues to press his men onwards through that designated gap. Now a Union artillery battery on Hook's Ridge opens up in response, but does minimal damage to the advancing Confederate troops. Now Bernie, in uh, blue and green, has the next next activation, and he quickly snaps into action. Now Ward's brigade, uh, the two, one, three, uh, blue and green units with the red dot, they uh, they spread out to the south and they block the gap. Whilst in the north, De Tobrian's brigade, the three, one, three uh, marker, uh, blue and green with a green dot, they likewise spread out to protect their flanks. And together, the two brigades cover a frontage of close to sixteen hundred yards. Uh, they're about to bear the brunt of the attack of six Confederate brigades with supporting artillery. Now shortly after Bernie places his division into order, McLaws division comes charging across the fields. Now the CSA brigades of Semmes with the green dot and Kershaw with the yellow dot first activated under advanced orders, then a second successive activation saw both brigades successfully change to assault orders and they use this to rush the Union defenders. Uh, Semmes' men led the charge, striking first against de Tobriand's northern flank and then following up with successive charges south along the Union line, which you can see in detail here. Against roughly even odds, de Tobriand's men decided to stand and fight, but they simply cannot hold back that, that, that wave after wave of Confederate attackers. Uh, disorder, disorder reigned amongst de Tobriand's Union brigade as Semmes' Confederate men punched a hole in the Union line and sent the remaining defenders reeling back. So McClaws' men were on a roll. Uh, Semmes continued to push back the Tobrian's brigade without giving the Union defenders uh, really a break to rally here. They kept pushing. Uh, buoyed by this success in the north, Hood's men in the south also tried to change orders to attack. Uh, Laws, with a yellow dot, uh, passed the order down the line, but confusion reigned and his brigade halted. 
Robertson with the white dot also tried to change orders, but his men <laughs> saw Laws's men halt, and so they followed suit and also stood at their ground. Anderson with the yellow dot and Benning uh, with a blue dot right down the bottom then decided to bring order to the situation that was unfolding. Uh, they advanced to form a line with Laws's men, but they waited for the other brigades to sort themselves out before pressing further. On Burney's activation, he once again fell back in the north, whilst in the south, Waters' men spread their line further south, fearing uh, that the Confederate troops may attempt to outflank them around the big round top. Now, Burney's line was wearing thin at this stage. Casualties were mounting all along the line, and this contributed to a growing problem with disorder. Even so, Burney held hope for, to the, the northeast, he could see Union reinforcements from Sykes' 5th Corps marching down the Taney Town Road. Uh, Vincent and Tilton's brigade marched south to defend Little Roundtop, while Schweitzer held a position along the road in the north to provide assistance to uh, De Tobriand in that area. Now, Hood received uh, one of the final activations for this turn, and hearing reports of Union, reinf- union reinforcements uh, heading to the area, he urged his brigades to push harder. Now, Laws attempted to change orders, and a loose cannon result sent his men charging straight into the Devil's Den. Uh, Law's brigade was already heavily weakened and disordered, but that did not stop his men. They rushed straight over the rocky terrain and up the slopes of Hewick's Ridge, straight into the face of combined Union artillery and rifle fire. And once again, it is amazing what pure determination can produce. The Union defenders first faltered and then fled from the heights, in the process leaving behind an entire battery of six valuable P-10 guns in Confederate hands. Laws's men lost heavily in the charge, but they had scattered the Union defenders before them, and, and Laws' lead regiment were now only 500, 500 yards from Little Round Top. Anderson's men also pressed on through the rough woods around uh, Big Round Top, suffering some uh, disorder through their ranks in the process, uh, which is unfortunate given the large size of these units, uh, while behind Laws' men, Roberts and Benning also pressed forward in support. At the close of the first hour, the Confederates had really experienced the run of the battle. They had proven against the odds that even disordered Confederate regiments could match up against combined Union artillery and infantry defending in rough terrain. Now, across the battle so far, numbers were certainly in uh, Confederate favour, but the terrain was really working against them. Anderson's brigade in the far south had barely fired a shot, yet they were all disordered due to the bad terrain. And because of that, their brigade was now combat ineffective. All those men... Um, were meant to be responsible for turning the Union's left flank, and that may prove problematic in the coming hours. Uh, This image shows more detail of the situation in the north, following Burney's final attempt to reorganise his line, and the 110th Pennsylvania is facing uh, southeast because they failed uh, at a disorder result after crossing a down uh, down steep slope, uh, and thus they stopped movement in that hex. Now, time will tell if the Union reinforcements can organise themselves in time to halt this Confederate advance.